one. This picture represents the neighborhood as it existed between 1920 and 1930. If you look here on my left, this is the part of the neighborhood that was the Jesu Church. Along here was where the St. Joseph's Prep School was and St. Joseph's College. They were all in this area. And this area in here was an open space where you could play ball, play softball, basketball, and football. So any of the neighbors that were on the older boys, they could play in this area. If you recognize this area today, it doesn't exist. It's all filled in with the new prep school. The prep school now comes from this area all the way down to this property here on Gerard Avenue. You can see the front of the prep now. It's all an open area with trees and grass. This building here is the original Jesu School. This goes back to 1873. It was three stories high. It wasn't torn down until close to 1960. Over here is the Jesu Boys School. On this side of the, of the building, the nuns lived. And on this side of the building, it's where the boys went to school from fourth grade through the eighth grade. This building back here is all part of the former prep school. Now this is where you go to school. But the prep boys stayed in there until you moved in sometime in the 1960s or 70s. On the roof of that school was a playground where they had basketball courts and tennis courts and there was a big wire structure over here so no one could fall out into the street and so that the tennis balls and basketballs wouldn't roll over into the street. Here is where the old J Zoo rectory is. That's now part of the prep. This building down here is where the Jesuit priests lived that teach at the prep. That used to be Cole's funeral parlor. Down here is where the girls used to go to school. There was this Quaker school building there that the girls went to there from, from first to eighth grade. Down here, there was an older Episcopal church that no longer is there. That's part of the prep property. Back here, this is my house where I used to live, right there. And right here on this corner is where the grocery store was. That's where we got our potato chips, milk, lunch meat, etc. If you go over to this part of the map, this is where St. Joseph's Hospital is. You can't see it here now because it goes down a little further. This street here was Style Street. That's no longer there. These homes are no longer there. They were all torn down. There was a street here called Flora Street that no longer exists, but it does continue over here from 17th Street down to 16th Street. This area of Style Street no longer exists, but it does exist here that goes out to Ridge Avenue. Maybe you could point out where you live. You said you lived around 22nd Street? That's you, okay. So you're off the map today. We'll have to bring you in on another day. And you were out at 26th Street, so you're off the map also. You were all the way over here. As you went up here, this was Temple University up in this area that still exists, but they're taking up more property. And as you go over further here, you see the playing fields that Temple has put in today. If you remember up here, this is Master Street, which is about two blocks north of Thompson Street. And if you go back here, it was the Bridge Avenue Farmer's Market where all the farmers used to come in and sell their food. Um, that no longer exists, but I think this is Ridge Avenue that runs down here. So do you have any questions about this picture? Yeah. So here's where you are today. If you lived in 1930, you would have gone to this building. I think you're in a better building today. But you also have a playground up on the roof today that's been put in recently. No how, how long was this there since the beginning? How long was this building here? The top, the top, the, the roof. top. That was there up until it was up there until about 1990. And then um, some of our benefactors added two floors to that building. So now you have a playground on the top of the new 
addition. There were two floors added to it. And then there's the prep roof where you also have some areas in which you can play. So it's a big change. The church is pretty much the same. There isn't much there. This building down here has been gutted. This is where all the priests used to live. Today the prep's taken over that area as well. And then if you go further here, you're over to Broad Street. On Broad Street, we used to have a big hotel. The Majestic Hotel was at Broad and Gerard Avenue. It doesn't exist anymore. I think they have a Wendy's there or a McDonald. And if you go further down Broad Street, there was the Metropolitan Opera House. And that later on turned into a wrestling rink. And I think they want to reconvert that and bring it back to an opera house. They're talking about that in a couple of years down at Broad and Poplar Street. If you go out to 26th Street, there used to be a swimming pool out there. Maybe it's still there. You, you used to live at 26th Street, so maybe you remember there was a swimming pool there uh, that was open to all the... Where? Do you remember what it was called? Uh, I don't remember what it was called, but it was in the Sharswood area. You know where Sharswood is? I live in Sharswood. Okay, you're right behind Gerard College. So. A lot of these homes now have been torn down. A lot of where the street that I lived on, there's only one house living, one house that exists there. I had my grandchildren down to see where I lived about four years ago, so I took them over and showed them where my house was. They said, "But Granddad, there's no house there." I said, "Well, that's okay. We lived in a tent," and they looked at me strange. I know. <laughs> but I, I told them because it was an empty lot. I told them we had a tent that we lived in. But we really had a house, but it's been torn down now. I also had an African-American uh, minister that lived next door to me. And I played in the prep band, so he used to ask me to come in to play with his Holy Rollers, where they had services one or two nights a week. And that house is gone now also. So do you have any other questions about the neighborhood? Uh, did you still live in this building when you went to the prep? Uh, when I went to the prep, I lived in that building. So you lived there from uh, grade school to high school? Uh, right, and I was also in college when I lived there, and then my parents moved. When I finished college, I went into the Marine Corps. So when I came home, my parents had moved, and of course I got married and I lived elsewhere. But I came back for a number of years up into the 60s before I moved to Chicago. But I think if I, when I was in Chicago, there was a school just like the prep called St. Ignatius Prep. And next to it was a church just like this that they called Holy Family. If you would go up to Milwaukee, where they had um, a university up there, Marquette, you probably heard of Marquette's basketball team. Yes. They had a church next to it called the Jesu also. And they lived in Toledo, they had a church there called the Jesu also. But it wasn't as pretty as this Jesu church. So do you have any questions? I have one. You do. Did, uh, yes. Do the Jesu boys and girls back then, did they used to play together in the playground? Uh, the girls were not allowed to play in here, but the girls that had their school down here, they had their own playground. The boys were over here and they had their own uh, yard right behind the school there. They had a play yard where they played. The boys and girls were never in the same room. The girls didn't like us in those days, so <laughs> they, they kept us separated. You guys have a break in some of your classes. You have boys too, I think. No. No? Oh. Just for oh. So you're lucky then that you don't have to put up with them. Do you have to play with them in the schoolyard? Yes. You do? Are they good players? No. No. Okay. What do they <laughs> play? Volleyball? Basketball. Basketball. Do you play basketball too with the girls' team? Yes. Maybe you can play when you go to Mary and Mercy. What position do you play with the basketball team? Two and three. Which p position? Two and three. Oh, okay. You play the two forward and the three spot. You look like a guard to me, point guard. Okay, I should have known. Do you ever play against him? No. Just as well. I don't think he'd be able to keep up with you. He might not agree with me on that. <laughs> so, no more questions? Uh, I got one more. When was the first time that you visited the new building? First time I visited the the new building of the prep? No, at the new Jay building that Jesus moved into. 
Oh, the first time I visited there, well, I went to school there before the Jesu moved in, oh. the prep. So I went to, to the prep there between 1945 and 1949. And occasionally I'd go up on the roof and play basketball. I don't think I was as good as you, though. <laughs> now, some people might differ with me. They might say, hey, you were an all-star, but don't believe them. Also, down here, in this part of the old prep, there was a beautiful swimming pool down there. Now they have a swimming pool today, but it's in a different part of the building. And when we went to the Jesu school, they had the Kenny Gin was in this old building. St. Joe's University used to play there on Wednesday night and Saturday night. And we never had any cars in the neighborhood in those days. But on Wednesday night and Saturday night, all around the neighborhood were all these cars parked where people were coming to see St. Joe's University play. Down in the basement of that building was another basketball court. And on the left and the right were these pillars. So if you wanted to get away from the other player, you ran around the pillar. But the ceiling was only 11 feet high, so you couldn't shoot three pointers. So the only thing you could get in the basket was a layup. If you wanted to do a set shot, it would always hit the ceiling. If you were lucky, it would hit the ceiling and then bounce down into the basket. But, but then they thought you were intentionally doing that, but it was very difficult to do. You know why they called it Consumption Hall? Because that was, a, that was an illness that people got in those days called tuberculosis. And they all thought if you played down in that basement, you were going to get tuberculosis, so they called it Consumption Hall. But we all survived anyway. Any more questions? Another one. Another one. Boy, you're the question lady. <laughs> Back then, we used to go to Jesus. Did y'all have any after-school programs, like arts and crafts, or...? No, we had no arts and crafts. The only thing we had was everybody went to church on Thursday afternoon to practice singing for church on Sunday. So we didn't have any arts and crafts. We had one class where you could do drawing, but we weren't very good at it. But you you're, you ask questions. You ought to be on TV asking questions on the news <laughs> clip. Did you play sports? I was all schoolyard. I used to play basketball and football. We had a priest that would come out and play football with us. When he threw a football at you and you tried to catch it, you needed a chest protector. It was like a bullet when it hit your chest. We had another uh, priest that came out, and his name was Father Perot. You should see him when he would kick a football. I mean, it must be at least go 50, 60 yards. But we, we played in the schoolyard, but you couldn't play tackle out there because that was all concrete. We'd get hurt. So if you wanted to really play tackle, we had to go out to Fairmount Park. The blue grass. We were out, that was grass. But also, St. Joe's University used to let us go out to their field. They had a football field there called Fennessy Field. So if we wanted to play tackle, we would go out there. But in the 40s, the Philadelphia Eagles used to practice out there. So we would get to talk to the Philadelphia Eagles at that time. There was a player by the name of Leroy Zimmerman, was a quarterback, another quarterback by the name of um, Tommy Thompson. And the other fellow you might have heard about, Steve Van Buren. Yeah, I heard you heard of Steve Van Buren. He was the big running back. Then we had a guy that played guard for the Eagles, was Bucko Kilroy. Now, he didn't kill anybody, but that was his name, Kilroy. So I'm giving you a lot of sports history in Philadelphia, too. They didn't have the big stadiums that they have downtown now. We had the municipal stadium where the, the uh, Army-Navy game was. Yes. The palestra was there, so the colleges played at the palestra. But there also was a convention hall at 34th Street. And that's where the colleges played. They played double headers out there. And they had an ice skating rink where the Flyers played. And that was out at 40th and Market. It wasn't as big as the rink they have today. I think they won a championship or two. But the uh, Philadelphia Warriors, they won a championship in 1946 or 47 when they were coached by George Sineski. Who are the Philadelphia Warriors? The Philadelphia Warriors, uh, they had a player by the name of Howie Dalimar. He used to play for the University of Pennsylvania. 
They had George Sineski from St. Joe's. They had Cherry Rulo from Temple. So they, I think they won the championship in 1947. College championship? Uh, this, this was the professional championship. Oh, NBA championship? 